Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're looking at factoring polynomials today using synthetic division. Um, I've picked a very large polynomial um, just to, to show that it doesn't really matter. We're going to use the same process over and over and over, and we'll be able to find um, the factors of this. I also picked a nice polynomial that works out evenly. <clears throat> Some won't, but this one here will. So if you get a polynomial that does work out nicely, this, this method of using synthetic division is really helpful. All right. First off, we're going to list the factors of our final term, in this case, negative 30. So the factors of negative 30 are plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 30. I'm going to put that list up here. Next we're going to draw a line. You want to pick one of those factors, usually something around the middle, um, and you'll see why in just a minute, but you pick something around the middle. In this case, we, I picked 6. Um, some of these numbers are going to be factors of this polynomial, but or solutions for this polynomial. So we'll go ahead and pick 6 and see if that one works. So we put the factor over here on the left side of the line. And then on the right side of the line, we put the coefficients from our polynomial. So the coefficient of 5 to the, or x to the power of 5 is 1. The coefficient of our second term is negative 4, negative 12, positive 34, positive 11, and then negative 30, our constant at the end. All right. So that's the setup for this. Now what we're going to do is follow these steps. First, we take our initial coefficient and drop it down. And then we will multiply 6, which is our number, one of our factors that we're going to test out. So we do 6 times 1, and we'll put the result up there. 6 times 1 is 6. And negative 4, then we join those together using addition. Basically, we're just joining them together. Negative 4 and positive 6 will leave us with positive 2. And we're going to repeat this process. I'm going to take 6 and multiply it times 2. That will give me 12. Negative 12 plus 12 gives me 0. Perfect. Now I do that again. 6 times 0 gives me 0. 34 plus 0 is 34. And I continue. 6 times 34 gives me 204. 204 plus 11 gives me 215. Go back here. 6 times 215 gives me 1,290. Minus 30 or plus negative 30 gives me 1,260. Now, doing this, um, I purposely picked this because oftentimes we'll pick the wrong factor at the beginning, and that's OK. What this tells me is the final answer that I got right here, that's what I'm looking at. If this is not 0, then 6 is not a solution for this polynomial. All right. We can also say that six is far. The solution here for six is way too big, so we don't want to use anything bigger than six. So by picking six, we're actually able to eliminate positive six, ten, fifteen, and thirty, which is why we pick a number in the middle. Now we know that our factors, positive factors, must be less than six, and so that helps us out. That's why we pick a number in the middle. If we picked thirty, we would have gotten some huge number here, and it wouldn't have helped us know that anything else. Pick a number in the middle, it helps kind of eliminate. If it's a huge negative number, it's too small. If it's a huge positive number, it's too big. All right. So we're going to pick a different factor. I'm going to pick positive 1 this time, kind of go back to the drawing board with my coefficients listed here and my factor listed, listed there. I'm going to follow exactly the same steps. I drop the coefficient 1. Now I multiply 1 times 1 is 1. Join together those terms, it gives me negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Join together those terms, and it'll give me positive or negative 15. Again, I'm just adding the terms together. Negative plus a negative gives me an even bigger negative. Now I'll multiply 1 times negative 15 gives me negative 15. 34 minus 15 is 19. 1 times 19 goes up here. 1 times 19 is 19. 11 plus 19 is 30. 1 times 30 is 30. And 30 minus 30 is 0. Good. When you get a 0 down here for your answer, 1 is a solution. So that means x minus 1 is a factor. 1 is a solution, meaning that this polynomial crosses the x-axis at the point 1. So the solution, or the factor, would be x minus 1. Okay, so we'll put the opposite in there. Now, at this point, what we can do is start factoring. We know 1 
minus x is a factor of this polynomial. And then we can write in parentheses everything else. Remember, these will just become our, our new coefficients, and x will reduce down, our exponent will reduce by 1 from our original exponent of x to the power of 5. So we have x minus 1, and then 1 goes in as our coefficient, negative 3, negative 15, positive 19, positive 30. All right? Now, at this point, there are two ways that you can go. You can either revert back to the original numbers and continue to search for factors, knowing that our factors will even out, or um, the better way is that we can rewrite an entirely new synthetic division question using the new polynomial. I'll show you what I mean by that. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this new factored solution. This is the first step of factoring. And I'm going to put that up top here. All right, I'm going to put that up top. And then I don't have to worry about my first part. That's already been factored. I'm going to take the coefficients from this, 1, negative 3, negative 15, positive 19, positive 30 down here. And I'm going to search for factors from my final number. So factors of 30, which I have listed here, positive or negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. But I'm going to continue working. Now, I'm going to pick a number about the middle. This time I'm picking 5. I already know 6 doesn't work. It didn't work before, so it's not going to work now. So, but 5, 5 might work. So I'm going to pick 5 and go ahead and start over. Again, I'm writing the number here, drop my coefficient. Multiply 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus negative 3 is positive 2. 5 times 2, go up here for 10. 15, negative 15 plus 10 will give me a negative 5. 5 times negative 5 gives me negative 25. 19 minus 25 is negative 6. 5 times negative 6 gives me positive 30. This is going to be somewhat repetitive, as you saw. So the farther along we go, the more I'm just going to kind of show us all the steps. But again, using a really big polynomial gives us an opportunity to show a lot of steps and show this repetitive process over and over. Not an exceptionally challenging process once we figure it out. 30 minus 30 is 0. What does that tell us? Well, if the answer is 0, 5 is a solution. Or in other words, x minus 5 is a factor. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my new factor, the next step of factoring. I have x minus 1 from before. Now I have x minus 5, because positive 5 is a factor. x minus 5, or positive 5 is a solution, I'm sorry. So x minus 5 will be a factor. And now I'm going to rewrite a new polynomial using these numbers as my coefficients. 1, and remember I dropped the, the um, exponent down to a one lower number. So instead of x to the power of 4, I have x to the power of 3. Then 2, negative 5, and negative 6. Now this is going to be pretty significant. This is going to help us out a lot. Because remember, we're, we list our our coefficients here, but we have to find the factors of the final term. So instead of finding factors of 30, now I'm finding factors of just negative 6. That makes my life easier. So it's either going to be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, or 6. I'll go ahead and pick um, 3. It's right around the middle. I'll pick negative 3 and go ahead and start working on it. Again, if you pick the wrong number, you go through and it's just not going to be a 0. I'm going to pick the correct numbers from now on because I don't want this video to be too terribly long. But I'm going to pick the correct numbers and just show the process. Um, so I drop my first coefficient, and then I multiply. Negative 3 times 1 gives me negative 3. 2 and negative 3 gives me negative 1. And I'll multiply negative 3 times negative 1. That would give me positive 3. Negative 5, positive 3 gives me negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me a positive 6. I join them together and get 0. Again, doing that same process over and over. A little bit quicker each time. Um, we know that 0 is a solution, or 0 is our final answer. Therefore, negative 3 is a solution, and our factor is x plus 3, or x minus negative 3. The opposite of our solution goes into being our factor. So our next factor is going to be x plus 3. And then we rewrite our new polynomial using the coefficients 1, negative 1, and negative 2. At this point, you could probably factor this trinomial using the rules of factoring, but I'm going to continue using synthetic division just to show you that you can um, for our final solution. So again, I take 
everything else here doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just going to take the coefficients 1, negative 1, and negative 2, list them here. I need to find the factors of the final term, which is 1 and 2. All right, and I'm going to pick one of those factors. I'm going to pick the, the um, factor of positive 2, because I know it's going to work. Um, but again, if you pick one that's not going to work, you'll just at the end not get 0 and know that that one, you can remove it. So I'm going to pick the factor of 2, drop down my first, um, my first coefficient. 2 times 1 is 2. 1, 2 and negative 1 gives me 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2, positive 2 gives me 0. Therefore, 2 is a solution. My factor is x minus 2. Now, at the end here, my factor of x minus 2, I have my coefficients 1 and 1. So I'll put that in there, remembering to drop my exponent from x squared to just being x. And I've actually finished it. I don't have to do it a, another time to find out that negative 1 is the other solution. In other words, x plus 1 is the final factor. So that is how we would solve this. Let's um, start out here. This massive polynomial into our final answer, remembering that this means that our zeros are the places where this polynomial crosses the zero or the x-axis are negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2, and 5, the opposite of the numbers that are inside of each of these factors.